What's up guys, I wanted to bring you a, another deck tech breakdown. Uh, I'll go over the deck, go over some mulligan tips, go over game plan, uh, win condition, things like that, some flex cards, some tech options, all that good stuff, and uh, maybe jump into one game and uh, just kind of walk you through like we normally do with our different deck tech and gameplay videos. So, you know, as always, I'm Shane, and this is the Twin Suns Podcast YouTube channel, so if you're if you're here, throw a like, throw a comment, subscribe, and uh, let's jump right into this deck here. So I want to go over today uh, a fearsome deck. So as of late, there's been a lot of good Fearsome decks running around. Pretty much the core shell of that Fearsome deck is a mono Shadow Isles deck. It uses champions like Elise and Callista. So this is a sort of new player friendly deck as well because it doesn't use a ton of epics and it does use Elise, which you do start with two of, uh, but it is using three Callista. So you don't have three Callista. You know, she's not actually super important for the deck, so you could get by without her, but uh, she's pretty solid, and, and you do want her in general. But other than that, there's not that many epics. So taking you through the core of the deck, um, I'm not going to just read through the list, but we'll go through the cards. Obviously, the deck list will be uh, in the description and in the comments for you as well for any mobile users out there. But here we have, uh, you know, one drop. We got the onlooker. We got the arachnoid horror. We got Elise uh, for units. Just going through that, we have miss rates. We have doom beast, frenzied skitterers, Callista. Wraith Caller, and then the splash here is They Who Endure. So since we are in a Legion deck with Wraith Caller, we need to have a low amount of splashed cards. So the only three cards that we're splashing are three They Who Endure. So it is a 37-3 split here for the deck. So game plan really is uh, have a large presence of early units. And actually, I should talk about the spells real quick. So we have one Mark of the Owls, which is super important, but we have three Stalking, three Glimpse, because we need Draw Engine, because our units are cheap, so we want to be able to draw quickly. Uh, Risen Mist is super solid, so it's burst speed, and you get to get out another Mist Wraith, which will buff all the other Mist Wraiths and just be uh, a burst speed unit. So you can open attack or have a surprise blocker or something along those lines. Super strong. We have two Atrocity here at the bottom as well. You get to kill an ally to deal damage to, uh, you know, deal damage equal to its power to anything, so that's a really good Nexus finishing uh, thing with things like They Who Endure or even Big Cost Myths. Uh, and then we have one Harrowing here at the end. So the one Harrowing is a solid uh, finishing card here. And, um, you know, it just resummons all the strongest allies. It doesn't work super great with They Who Endure in general because They Who Endure will be a 1 1. So this won't resummon They Who Endure. But it still fits as a one of because, uh, and normally this is their normal plan for the fearsome decks that normally splash, um, they normally splash uh, Pale Cascade from Targon is like the, the big one. There's also a few other ones. Some just run straight Mono Shadow Isles, some splash a few other different cards. But they normally run two Harrowing, and, and that is to resummon uh, a lot of Myths and Wraith Callers and things like that, as well as even the Skitterer, because the Skitterer, when he gets his effect, is a summon effect. So when he gets summoned, he'll uh, push the whole enemy board at minus one. So with that, you can get more fearsome damage through. But the game plan really for winning is uh, establish a strong board presence uh, pretty quickly. You don't really want to play anything on one because you want to save the onlookers for later so you can play them with fearsome uh, on a big turn where they don't have many blockers. But establish a strong board presence with uh, some fearsome attacking units like Elise and the Arachnid Horror and Miss Wraiths. And then uh, save plenty of hand drawing techniques for Glimpse and Shadows. So you can refresh your hand when you need to. You save those for around the mid rounds, but keep the pressure up and then try to get big swings with the Skitterer. So you want to play the Skitterer and get a bunch of damage through. So we're not really worried about trading efficiently. We want to just push damage through to the Nexus. And then once you get toward the end of the game, they who endure will be a thick body with overwhelm, so they can push plenty of damage through as well. Now, this isn't going to be the deck that's going to get they who endure to be like a 2020. Consistently, you'll probably get like a 10-10, uh, probably like an 8-8 to like a 12-12 is like the standard first they who endure around turn 7 to 9. Uh, and that's kind of what you're looking for. That's plenty big enough. You're getting plenty of damage through early with Fearsome. So you just want the They Who Endure just to be kind of beefy as you get through that mid-range. Uh, and, you know, you have plenty of triggers for death, right? So you at least summons an extra spider, so that will consistently die. You'll have ephemeral units from Stalking Shadows yourself. Um, and you'll have all your Miss Race that will just constantly be attacking. And they will eventually have three-cost blockers. And the other thing is, if they don't have three-cost or three-attack blockers and you can get damage through... That's fine. You'll take a smaller They Who Endure later in the game if you get additional Nexus damage early because your They Who Endure doesn't need to be that big. Uh, and then, yeah, at the end, you just want to use Atrocity to try to finish off the uh, opposing Nexus, like I said. So there are some flex spots. The champions are pretty consistent. You can try Nocturne, but he's not nearly as good. And you could try Hecarim over Clist if you really wanted to, but Clist is pretty solid just for a four attack, three cost fearsome unit. It's all about getting damage through. So those two are pretty... Pretty good staples. I'll talk about some flex cards as you go through as I go through here, and I'm going to take Shadow Isle or Freljord out. Well, first I'll highlight one other card from Freljord that's pretty solid is Trollchant. So Trollchant can reduce an opponent's uh, attack and increase one of your own health 
Uh, so it's really strong because you can actually get your enemy's units below three attacks so they can't block your fearsome units. So that's one flex card, but again, we're going mono Shadow Isles, so we have to keep it true to mostly Shadow Isles cards. So some all talk. Fading Memories is solid. Uh, pick a follower, you create an ephemeral copy of it in your hand. Really good with Wraith Caller because the Wraith Caller will get a summon as well, or even really good with They Who Endure. But a little bit unnecessary for what we have going. Mark of the Isles only have as a one of. A lot of these decks run two of them. Um, it, it's super solid. Uh, it's, you know, plus two, plus two for one is just good surprise burst damage through to the Nexus, which is solid. Shroud of Darkness is an interesting choice here because it can actually give a unit spell shield and plus one attack. So it's really good for when you want to use your own They Who Endure that turn. You pay one at burst speed and you get a They Who Endure out. But the, the risk part of this is that it's, it's a really cheap card, and it eats up a decent part of your hand. Um, so it's it's dead until the combo turn. You can't really afford that all the time. We don't really want to run any one-drops, and we're not doing the typical They Who Endure package with Cursed Keeper and Blighted Caretaker, so I'm going to skip those. They're not that important. Uh, Unspeakable Horror is pretty solid uh, for a Drain 1. You can normally play something else first and then still get some hand value, and it can be targeting to their Nexus. So that's worth a uh, worth a position, possibly. You can get a little bit spicy and try things like Mist Call, which will uh, resummon something that died. So when you get to use a Mist Call on a Wraith Caller, that's huge. If they've only killed the Wraith Caller and you get a Wraith Caller back, you get a, another Mist Wraith as well. Pretty big, but it's a little bit too fancy. Same thing with Chronicler of Ruin can be the same thing. Now, if the Chronicler of Ruin is played on the Wraith Caller or Mist Wraith, they get their summon effects again. But all that said, typically not going to consistently be that great uh crumble could but we're really more worried about just getting nexus damage through so we have some options for crumble but we we really just want to hit their nexus so i think that's really all of them here once you get to the top end it's a little bit too late in the game we want to try to finish by seven or eight so the other option i guess i could highlight is haunted relic it's just a cheap way to get three one one ephemeral units to level up Callista. Again, that would be more shifting the deck toward a Callista deck, which would be you want to put Haunted Relics and Missed Calls in, which is a fine version to run. Um, but we're staying focused on just using Fearsome. So if we're using our mana for do things like that uh, to get Callista leveled, we're not going to be getting as much damage through early, and that's what we want. We want to be consistently getting damage through early with Fearsome, and then we want to smack at the end of the day with a They Who Endure. Uh, so let's talk about matchups real quick uh, in general. So against mid-range things, we have actually we have a pretty good matchup. We get a lot of damage through uh, early. We can slow their board down with Frenzied, and we can push damage through. Um, that's for a lot of mid-range things like Scouts and stuff like that. Against Fiora and Shen, though, which is another mid-range deck, they have a decent matchup into us because we don't have a lot of direct removal for Fiora, so if they do see Fiora, it's rough. On top of that, they run a decent amount of three attack units as well as having Sharp Sight, which can buff them to 3-3, as well as having Barriers and Challengers. So they can really aggressively start picking apart our board. Uh, they also run things like Deny, which really, really hurts uh, Atrocity at the end, or Harrowing. But that said, it's still uh, a winnable matchup if they don't see the right things. We still can get a big turn of a huge damage swing. So it's not a completely uh, you know lost matchup. Against aggro, uh, we can do a lot of damage through. I mean, aggro can put, like, like discard aggro is what I'm talking about mainly. They can definitely put a decent amount of units on board um, and consistently get, uh, you know, wide attacks. But we also get pretty wide boards. And we can block eh, moderately okay, but we can also put a lot of pressure on them. And if they don't see a vision to get a lot of damage across their board buffed, we get to do a lot of early Nexus damage, which is huge for us. Um, talking about like Draven, Ezreal, they have a decent matchup in those because just because they have a consistent amount of removal, but we can actually kind of, you know, pace with them early. And as long as we're not taking too much damage, we don't have a lot of removal, but if we can pace with them and get some damage through, they who endure can really finish off uh, the game for us because they are uh, massive and they don't have anything that really deals at X amount of damage. You know, the, the one thing they could do is if they're running Noxie and Guillotine so they can ping that, that is a viable strategy, but other than that, uh, we still have ways around with an atrocity and things, so it's not a terrible matchup. Into ramp, we feel pretty solid. You do have to watch out for big avalanche plays. If you're hitting a really solid mist wraith curve, and we have a ton of mist wraiths, they only have two health, so they do die to avalanche. Uh, they also die to ice quake, so if you're seeing an ice quake, you can watch that, but we can normally pressure them pretty hard early, and if we level at least up, it's really easy because you're just pulling... Uh, trundle to the right with like a 1-1, one, one. but we're really pushing damage. The Weirding Stones doesn't block. If you keep successfully pushing damage, you're going to get there. And, you know, they do have answers to They Who Endure, uh, obviously, as like a Vengeance, excuse me, or even a um, Harsh Winds or a Freeze here. That being said, we still have pretty solid matchups into that. Uh, and, you know, there's much more decks, but those are like the generics, you know, what I'm looking at. As far as what the flex cards are that we could take out here, 
We could drop a Harrowing, but it has felt pretty good to have a, as a one of. We can definitely drop a Mark of the Isles. But the rest of this core of the deck is very pretty much tight. I mean, there isn't a whole lot that I'm willing to drop in. Now, this is obviously for the They Who Endure version. If you wanted to switch it up, you could drop the three They Who Endures. Uh, and you could just put in three Pale Cascades. That's like the generic uh, version. It's, it's very close to this shell. There's a few other changes. You definitely want another Harrowing at that point. And you might want to drop like one Doom Beast or, you know, one other early unit so you can fit that extra Harrowing in as well. Uh, that's solid as well. But this has been a pretty nice version of uh, Fearsome so far. Uh, it's definitely pretty fun. You get a lot of damage through early and you can really try to uh, punish at the very end of the game. So I'm going to run one game with it. We'll just go to normals for this. Mess around a bit. Take this time to say, uh, you know, if you guys haven't, drop a like on the video, make a comment, make sure you're subscribed to us. We put new content out as much as possible. And uh, yeah, I'll be uh, playing in the seasonal tournament this coming up weekend here. Now that we're here, and uh, should be very fun and uh, pretty excited. I'm not really sure what decks I'm bringing yet, but I probably will not be trash nudes. Uh, Lulu and Tarek deck. So, um, yeah, I mean, Mist Wraiths are good. We'll probably keep both Mist Wraiths. We don't need two Callistas. So we're not looking for a one-drop. We don't want Stygian Onlooker early. We actually want that late. So a pretty common... Attacking on three is pretty interesting here. So one of, like, the common plays here is, yeah, I could play Elise on two. Which would be fine, and Stygian's pretty good. But a pretty common play, and depending on what they play, you know, they have a... A Witch, which isn't that bad. I can play a Mist Wraith on turn 2. I banked my turn 1 mana, which means on turn 3, I can actually just burst speed out Risen Mists because I have that banked mana from turn 1 and have an attack for 6. So this is a good play if you did play a 2-drop. Even if your 2-drop's not a Mist, but really, really good when your 2-drop is a Mist. So at burst speed, before they can play a unit back, and obviously they could have answers and things like that, but before they play a unit back, we burst speed it out and we just did 6 damage on turn 3. Uh, and they couldn't play a 3-drop. If they had a 3-drop with 3-attack, they weren't able to play it there, which is super nice. So we can really take some damage early. We're not super worried about it um, as far as that goes. So next turn, you really just want to start looking at where we're going to be at math-wise for next turn. We're going to be at turn 5. So we're going to probably want to play a Mist Wraith, an Elise, and a Stygian Onlooker. So this turn allows us to be able to play a Callista to threaten anything that we want to threaten. But realistically... We're kind of okay with just taking some damage. And he's using a Pale Cascade, which is obviously solid. The buff is just temporary. So it's only a this turn buff. So it's not going to help his blockers next turn. Uh, so we're just going to eat the damage. And he doesn't have that option to play on his turn now. So you can't buff his units into attacking range. Uh, we could just open attack pretty solidly. But I'm going to go a little greedy. I'm going to try to play all my units out. So I'm going to play Elise plus Fearsome, or plus Mist Wraith, plus the Stygian Onlooker. And, you know, if he has one more three attack blocker, it is what it is. This way we can actually save a unit too, depending. So he does have another three attack blocker. Another Mist Wraith on top of it. Yeah, we'll go with the Stygian as well. So we're going to have a Spider Burn if we send all this, but I think that's worth See what he does here. Trash nudes. So he's got Lulu. Who is a 3-4. So she can block. So he's got three blockers here. So we're getting some damage through. And then we just got to live on our turn. So, yeah, it's debatable to, like, maybe hold a Mist Wraith back so I can send that Spider for a blocker. But the Spider really is just going to get jumped by something easy. So, yeah, if he wants to stay alive, he needs to block with... Yeah, Lulu is a good block there, but all these things have four attacks. So they do get through and kill Tarek, which is nice. And if we had our other uh, plus two, plus two for one would have been nice. So it looks like he's saying he's more okay with um, Tarek, uh, Lulu dying, compared to Tarek, which is interesting to me. It might be a player, but I'm not sure, depending on what his hand is. Like, Tarek can level up and be pretty good, but Lulu there could have made his Witch a 5-5 to get damage through on his turn, which could have won him the game. So I'm not 100% sure of that play, but... 
is what it is. And we, we're not a very interactive deck, right? We don't have a lot of... We don't have really anything that interacts with their, uh, their board other than really um, Atrocity, right? And if we get Challenger... So we are going to have to jump block here at some point. This way, go. So Tarek's going to make them invulnerable and not be able to take any damage, which is rough. Oh, yeah, that's a huge spell. So he might win because of that there. That's a really strong spell. To, and all life. to be running. That's his, probably his best healing option here. So now she has that as well. So that's healing for two. So we definitely block here. And we probably just kill so he doesn't get the heal off there. So we will heal, heal for two on that side. But uh, probably do this here. I don't know why I put, put the wrong unit in front first. So yeah, we'll go down the four. He'll go up to four. But he only has one elusive blocker, and then we can play a bunch more fearsome, or one fearsome blocker. So, good play, but luckily Glimpse got around some healing, which is huge. We did draw our They Who Endure, which is pretty big, um, but he's only a 4-4 right now, so we haven't seen a ton of success on um, actually having units die, which is fine, but he surrenders, so I guess he didn't have an answer, so I can open attack with plenty of fearsome units. So, yeah, so that game was kind of a thing where, like I said, all my fearsome units were just getting the damage through, so my They Who Endure isn't going to be that big by turn 7. Uh, but that's that's okay, right? I mean, we we did damage because our units weren't dying. Um, now, you know, it was still a close game where we both were low on health, but we didn't really care too much about our Nexus, and then all we did was really just push the damage through as hard as we could. Uh, on our turn, we were still going to be able to play Callista as well, uh, and another unit, depending on what we drew and everything, and then... We were going to have uh, a lot of attack damage going through. He had one thing with three attack that could block. So that's pretty much what you're kind of doing that math game. How many things do they have at three attack that can block? And uh, if they don't have enough, then we get to push damage through. So that's the deck. Uh, we'll just call it, you know, Fearsome Endure. And, uh, you know, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please leave a like, comment, and uh, make sure you subscribe. Try to do new videos uh, quite often. So, peace.